Well, howdy, folks. Let's have a look at natural gas. It's been a pretty good week. We've had a good move up. We've moved up to our target area. But are we going to continue? So I've decided to go the full Ninja Elliott wave route. And we're going to look at impulse wave, corrective wave, and perhaps three move wave, blah, blah, blah. And then discern from the Elliott waves how we're going to get to where we go to next, considering that we could be in a three wave, five wave, corrective, backward impulse type of move. Now, I'm only joking. And, and I'm really not trying to make fun of the Elliott wave theorists. I'm sure there's something in it. And I'm sure a lot of people enjoy looking at Elliott waves. It's just not my thing. But we'll have a look at the news quickly, see what's going on. And and then we'll just have a look at the charts and, and see how we're going to approach this. It looks pretty good at the moment, I have to say. We've reached our target area. The question is, are we going to correct and pull back or even move lower? Or are we going to move higher? And if we are going to move higher, where are the areas where we might pull back, correct a little bit and then move higher? Or are we just going to blast through and carry on up to $3 and move higher? Let's have a look at the news quickly and see what's going on. So I'm going to quickly look at natural gas world and then natural gas intel to see if there's anything exciting there. We do know a couple of things that there's warm weather, uh, potentially much hotter weather on its way in the North American region, which is going to require more air conditioning to be turned on and therefore a demand for natural gas. Uh, we do know that there's potentially a supply drop in Europe because of a shutting down of a power plant. We also know that European natural gas prices have shot up. So all of those things are kind of bullish for the price of natural gas. Let's see if there's anything on here that we can spot. And really with news, I, I kind of just scan through it and see if there's anything that really stands out or perhaps something in the fine print that we haven't noticed before. But really, there's not much on natural gas world, just the normal sort of news as usual of pressure on um, natural gas as a, as a resource for energy, trying to go green. And uh, you'll see green this, green that all over the show. There's an interesting one here that a second LNG import terminal is, is to be set up in Bangladesh. Oh, and we've got AstraZeneca turning to cows to cut down on the use of gas. Tokyo gas to spend 1.5, 1.4 billion. Bangladesh running out of electricity. Europeans demanding natural gas rebounding as Russian supply dips. Asian prices, however, dropping at the same time. So again, just a, sort of a mixed bag. Something about Tanzania. This one here, Tokyo gas to spend 1.4 billion on renewable power at home and abroad. So down with gas again, we want renewable energy, wind turbines, hydroelectric, solar, cows as well, it appears. So really nothing that one could actually make trading decisions off. There's one thing I do want to cover, that that's rig count. We'll have a look at that shortly. Let's go to natural gas intelligence. This is always a bit worrying when you see natural gas futures rally fifth straight day on tightening fundamentals, spot prices level off. Whenever you see bullish news in those sort of media, you have to be a bit worried. Normally the, the media are behind what's going on, so it's a sort of a lagging thing. So when you see bullish news coming out in the media, you know that possibly we're going to have a pullback or a change in direction. But there's more bullish news there. Natural gas prices advance. Another one, natural gas futures rally, etc. And then we got something on the weather, which I think is bullish. Sweltering heat boosts West Texas natural gas forwards with LNG keeping pressure on prices. And then the rig count. I'm going to have a look at the rig count shortly, but there's a little bit of news about it here in natural gas intel. A U.S. natural gas rig count. That's the Baker's Hughes rig count. Slides further with Permian and Marcellus leading the way. Okay, so there was a drop by eight rigs in the rig count. We'll have a look at the chart on that and talk very briefly about whether that's significant or not. U.S. LNG exports to Europe surged 5% during the beginning of the year, despite the market lull. And something from Mexico, North American natural gas futures rise amid soaring demand south of the U.S. border, Mexico spotlight. More news here about advancing prices with southern heat strengthening. Europe looks set for summer. I think they don't mean soaring temperatures when they say Europe set for summer. I think they just mean moderate temperatures. But upside risk looms in tight global natural gas market. So all in all, quite bullish. The news is saying prices are going up, futures are going up. There's a heat wave in North America and actually in Mexico as well. European prices are up. Henry Hub is up. Prices are all up. So we know the price has risen. We know that we've had a good rally during the last week. But we also know that we've reached our first target and that we need to be cautious from this point. And I'll tell you why when we look at the charts. Just talking about rig count. This is the rig count from Baker Hughes. You can see we had a drop in rig count by eight. So the rig count was 687. That's eight down from the previous reading. But Canada was up. And internationally, actually, rig count has gone up. So just in the US, gone down by eight. But internationally and in Canada, rig count's gone up. I put a chart up on Twitter, which I grabbed from my news feed. And here's the chart of the rig count. You can see the last reading there, that represents the eight rig drop in number. Very small drop, actually. And overall, the overall rig count is still pretty high. So it's dropped off a little bit. Naturally, if supply drops and demand remains the same, we should see an increase in the price. 
But the fact that the rig count has dropped doesn't mean that supply has dropped. There could be increases in efficiency. Demand may have dropped at the same time. Demand may have risen. Who knows? There's a complex equation going on here. We don't know exactly what the effect of a drop in the number of rigs has. And actually, if you look at the chart, we're still really, really high compared to, let's say, September 2020, when we were down at 300. And we're still at more or less about 700. So is that significant or not? I don't know. I think sentimentally, probably it injects a little bit of bullish sentiment into the market. When traders think that supply has dropped, therefore price might go up. All right. So really to glean from all that, the rig counts down a bit. Temperatures are up in North and South America and European prices have rallied. There's been, I think, one European main plant that's going offline and a lot of talk about getting gas from cows or something like that. So that's an interesting one. I haven't heard that before. Let's have a look at the charts. So here's my Elliott wave analysis, and this is what I think that we should be focusing on. Now, once again, I'm joking. We're going to get rid of all of this and just go back to the plain old charts, and I'm going to delete all the Elliott waves right now. So let's start with the day chart. And again, I think this is a pretty simple picture. I took profit at $2.60. We reached slightly above there on Friday, and we closed at about $2.60. $2.60 is a previous resistance zone. It's the top of this blue resistance band. It's also the 61.8% Fibonacci level you can see over there in very faint blue. So it's the golden number, the golden ratio. And a good trend, that's a good place for the price to reach before a retracement. So it's as simple as that. It's also the bottom of this supply zone, this sort of purple pink zone, which extends up to $2.80 before we get to the $3 rejection zone, which is the target for the first part of this move. So we're aiming for $3. Beyond $3, we want to get to $3.40, 50, 60, or 75. That's this level up here. But this is potentially going to be a slow process, and we're going to have to get through these levels progressively one by one. We've got through the first couple of levels. We thought $2.15 would hold, and it did. We wanted to get through these moving averages on the day chart. That's the 20 and the 50 at about $2.35, and we did. Then we wanted to get through $2.45 to $2.50 and hold above there, and we did. You can see that's a previous resistance zone, and it's also the 50% Fibonacci level. We've now reached the 61.8% Fibonacci level and this rejection zone and the bottom of this pink supply zone before we get to $3, and then $3.40, 50 60 or 75 So that's where we are. It's really quite simple. Now you can draw as many lines. You can postulate as much as you want. You can say, well, this might just be a corrective move and that we're likely to break that back down through this trend line again, back down to $2.15, retest that, eventually break through, get back to $2, and then back down into the $1.80 to $1.50 region. Or you could view this as a bullish trend and that we're moving up, and that we've held above this year's low with a double or potentially a triple bottom at around $2. Then we formed a new ledge at $2.15, managed to carve out a bottom at $2.15 and this rising trend line. And now we've managed to break up, consolidate through there. We saw lots of spike lows down to this trend line. We'll have a look at it more closely on the four hour chart. So we saw lots of support coming in there, lots of buying, lots of rejection from this trend line upwards at around $2.25. And then eventually the surge up to $2.60, which is where we closed on Friday. Now it's the weekend. Bear in mind as well, We've got the rollover coming up on the 27th or the 28th of this month, depending on your broker. So that's going to affect prices as well. We've got Contango to deal with, and whether you're dealing with natural gas futures or natural gas spot prices or UNG or boil or cold, any of those derivatives and ETFs, etc. It's going to depend on the way the rollover affects your pricing. And it's been quite messy recently, so it's a tricky one. You'll have to decide whether you want to hold into the rollover, whether you want to take profits if you're in this long from $2, $2.15, $2.30. Or if you want to take profits now, wait for a pullback, wait for the rollover. I'll tell you what I've done though, I've taken half of my trade off now at $2.60. I'm holding half of my original position. My original position was 50% of my desired position. I've taken half of that off. So what remains is 25% of my desired total position. So I'm still playing this pretty cautiously. And I expect that the price might pull back into some of these support levels before moving back up again. I'll see if I can draw this with a little drawing tool. So here we are right now, and we'll have a look at it on the four hour chart. But if I just put this drawing tool in there, we could see something like this, and then a move back up. Or we could see a deeper correction, particularly with the rollover coming up, or the roll as some people call it, perhaps down to one of these levels, and then a move back up. So let's just say, for example, we get back down to, let's allow for a deeper correction. Let's say we even get back down to this trend line. So we could see something like that. And then we remember we're aiming for $3. Eventually we'll get up to that level there, something like this. This is purely conjecture and speculative and could be completely different to this, of course. But this is the sort of thing 
that I think is likely to happen. And it's going to be a bit messy because of the rollover. So something like that. This trend line here and this support level at $2.30, 2930 I would like to hold. That's where I got into my long positions, if you remember, around about $2.29. I don't mind holding this 25% position for a pullback to $2.30, more or less where I got in, where I'll then look to add more longs back into this trade. And that might have to be after the rollover, which is coming up on the 27th or 28th. So if I just move that across a little bit and hover over there, you can see that's Wednesday, the 28th of June. And that period there with that pullback could just be at the time of the roll and then the move higher, perhaps a gap up or something like that, maybe a gap down after this weekend and then a gap up after the roll. I really don't know. This is all just sort of, I'm pulling this right out of my, you know what. But that's the sort of thing I'd be looking for. Whether we'll see that or not, I don't know. Let's have a look at the four hour chart very quickly. You'll see the same sort of thing on the four hour chart. Here are all these spike lows or wick lows, which indicated good buying pressure against this trend line and holding above the support level by and large. So what's significant is that not only did we dip down with these wick lows down to the trend line, but none of these candles actually closed beneath $2.25, the support level here. So that has proven to be a really strong level. And I'd expect that to continue to hold if this trend is going to continue. So anything down to this range here around $2.30 to $2.25, I would expect to be a good buying opportunity for natural gas. Bear in mind, I've still got 25% of my position open from this area. And if we get back down there, I'll be looking to add some more back onto that trade, having already taken some profit and mitigated the risk by doing so already. So that's it really. It is possible that we don't pull back at all and that we move up from here with a strong move this weekend. We might gap up even. We might get up to $2.80. And I'd expect a pullback from there as well because that's the 78.6% Fibonacci level. You can see across there in this very faint pink color. And it's also the wick area of this move up. The actual real area of rejection of this move from two to $3 was here, not the spike high. You can see that was just a spike, it wasn't a sustainable move up there, but there was a lot of action taking place around $2.80. And it just so happens that it's also the 78.6% Fibonacci, my favorite Fibonacci level. We'll have to wait to see how this week opens later on today. It's Sunday afternoon now, so Sunday night, around midnight my time, this market will open and we'll see whether we gap up or gap down or just stay at the same price and whether we pull back down into some of these lower levels to give us an opportunity to buy for the first time if you haven't bought just yet or to add to your long position if you're already holding a long position or you've taken partial profits up around $2.60. Just for completion's sake, let's have a look at the Henry Hub chart. This is my Black Bull broker. And on this chart, I don't have the Fibonacci's drawn in, but I've just got these broad bands of support and resistance. You can see we're right in the middle of this resistance band right now. So it's going to be a challenge to get through here, I think. Maybe not. We might just gap up above it this weekend and start to move up. There's the $2.80 level. And that's why I say this is the more crucial area, perhaps, than the $3 level, because that was more of a, a spike up, even though on the daily candle, it's actually a solid white candle. There was a massive gap down following that white candle. So I think this area here, $2.80, remember it's the 78.6% Fibonacci level, really crucial level. But then we've got $3, eventually we'll get there, I think. And once we break up through there, I think it's going to reject there first. And we're going to perhaps have to travel all the way back into some of these support levels around about 250, 220, 230 before moving up and eventually breaking up through $3 up into $3.40, 50, 60 or 75, which is my overall target eventually. There are some people who think that natural gas is going to fall down from somewhere around where we are now and move back down to $2.30, 25, and then 2.15, and then $2, and potentially break lower. Fair enough. It's possible that the price might do that. I really don't know. We have to trade on the probabilities. And just looking at this chart, to me, it looks pretty solid for a continued long trade. We formed a really good bottom at $2, and then we formed another really good low at $2.15, and then another one, $2.25 to $2.30. I don't think, personally, that we're going to get below there. I think the probabilities of that are far less than us continuing to rally up, but allow for pullbacks to $2.25 or $2.30. Well, I hope you found that useful. And as always, if you did find it useful, please help the channel with a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, why not consider subscribing? It all helps the channel and it helps me to put more of this content out there. Take care. Have a great rest of Sunday and good luck for the open later on.